Hello, OMC students, and welcome to Back Talk. This is episode... I forgot which episode it is. We were at episode five, around there? <laughs> yeah. We can start over. I gotta check it out. We can totally make this a cold open. Hello, OMC students, and welcome to Back Talk. This is episode six of the official Los Manos College Experience podcast. My name is Robert Pierce, I am the campus editor and social media editor for The Experience, and I'm joined here today by my co-host. I'm Anthony Martinez, I am the photo editor here on uh, LMC Experience. And if you guys haven't noticed, Anthony's been here like a good four or five weeks in a row. He is officially, as of today, the official co-host for The Experience, so it's going to be us every week, unless one of us gets sick, knock on wood. Right. So, uh, the first big story today uh, for the last issue of the paper, the last issue of the paper came out Friday, October 12th. And the big front page story was actually one that I wrote, so unfortunately I do have to self-plug right now by the nature of this podcast, was this story on LGBT issues chronicle, Professor Traces History in Paper. So what this is is that English instructor Jeff Mitchell Matthews, who he has founded a couple, a bunch of different clubs on campus. He's done a lot of activities for the LGBTQ community on campus. Uh, he described his office as sort of the unofficial gathering place for the community. And what he had, I, I thought it was genuinely pretty cool. Like, I'm not just saying this to make him sound better. I actually thought this was cool. He has a curated collection of issues of the experience dating all the way back to 1992. Uh, winter, fall, 1992, the first semester he taught on campus. And the common theme in his collection is that every issue that he still has has something to do with an LGBTQ issue on campus. Hmm. So it's either there was a column in that week about a marriage proposition, or there was a guest column talking about gay rights, or there was a story about how a poster got defaced or anything. I don't think it's the complete archive of every single time that we've like mentioned the word gay in the paper, mm -hmm. but it was a very interesting curated collection. And so I sat down with him, you were there for a little bit of it, Perry was there for a little bit of it, and... I, j I just sat down and talked to him about some of the different stuff that was contained in these issues. And it was nice because he's retiring at the end of this academic year, or at least he said he plans to, so mm -hmm. I wish him luck on that. Um, so it was a nice little retrospective for his career. It was a nice little retrospective for the college. It was a nice little retrospective for us. Right. Because one thing that was kind of eye-opening is that there's a couple issues that he showed me in which a staff writer, not even a guest columnist, but a staff writer would basically write a column saying, Oh, homosexuality is wrong. Like that, one of the ones I read, quote, the first three words of this staff writer's column was homosexuality is wrong. And that was in, it was either 92 or 93. And it's definitely interesting to see here we are 25, 26 years later. And I don't think any of us would even think about writing something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show, you know what I mean? Um, because you, you wrote the story on how we've covered it over the years, right? Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show, people of this paper didn't believe me when I predicted that we would find more conservative type writing yeah. in the paper. And even though this is California, even though this is the Bay Area, I mean, I mean, it, you know, it existed, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? California, I mean, this area was more like, you know, conservative. Mm -hmm. And I, it, was, it was definitely shocking looking through it because when I say that no one would think of writing it now, I don't mean they're like, oh, because of political correctness. No, I mm -hmm. mean that we've become a little bit more tolerant, a little bit more accepting, because to me, I, I have some friends who are just fiscal Republicans. They're just very concerned about small government. I don't really consider homophobia and gay bashing, I don't consider those to be conservative positions. I just consider them to be hateful positions. Mm -hmm. So I don't even think it's necessarily a conservative thing. I think it's just that we've grown more tolerant right. to where we can just live with other people whether we have the same orientation or the same politics, we can mm -hmm. just live with other people a little bit better. Right, and I don't mean to offend anyone by saying that either. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show, you know, just, yeah, what you said, how times have changed, you yeah. know what I mean? And uh, it's more, yeah, tolerance and just you know, accepting these stories as they come, you know what I mean? And not being so so hateful. Mm -hmm. I and um, I think there was a pretty good quote by Jeff Mitchell Matthews. I don't have the, I don't remember exactly what he said, so I'm slightly paraphrasing, but he basically said, um, that LMC is a small reflection of society as a whole, and he said that in his 25 years here, we've gone from being an anti-gay culture to at least a neutral gay culture, if not a pro-gay culture. So, um... He, get, what, he thinks we're more neutral? 
Well, he said if not pro, then at least neutral. But he mm -hmm. definitely thinks that things have changed and gotten a lot better in the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting talking to him because I've never had any of his classes. I've never talked to him for the paper before. So it's the first time I've met him, but a lot of people in this newsroom have interacted with him a bunch, and he's just a really interesting guy. Mm. Um, he kept a collection of newspapers for 25 years. That was very generous <laughs> of him to actually let us, you know, mm. see his collection, you know, and bring it over here. Even though we have all of these, you know, the archives uh -huh, yeah. of everything in the past, it's just like it's, having, you know, yeah. he dug it up for us, you know. Yeah, and it's not a matter of them being like lost issues either, it's just the fact that they're curated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's one thing where. A lot of people have digital archives, and we have something of a digital archive too, where you can just kind of control F, LGBTQ, find everything. Mm -hmm. But to have it in paper, earmarked with notes, to have someone narrating it for you like a Netflix documentary series, mm -hmm. it was just really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think it resulted in a really, I don't want to say well written, because mm -hmm. I wrote it, and I don't want to sound like that guy, Right. but I, I, I'm proud of how the story turned out. And I think genuinely that it has some very interesting subject material. And I know Lily was also very pleased with how it turned out. Well, you give credit where it's due, you know. I mean, <laughs> writings are always top notch, but I think it was definitely, I think the way you could put it is a, a good look back. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. on, on the paper, on the campus, and on Jeff Mitchell Matthews' time here. It was, yeah, I think it was a, a very uplifting or a hopeful, you know, story. So. And some other big front page stories that we had was Dale Sater did a story, not a column, a story on Measure R. And what this is is that it's on the ballot for this November. It's a county level law to set up taxation and regulation for marijuana industry. Mm. Now specifically, this does not affect personal growth or use. Mm -hmm. It's more for businesses who want to grow it and sell it as a product, as like a, the, the marijuana version of cigarette companies. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so he did a really nice summary. Dale, so. Since Dale's been at the paper, he's been doing a lot of really hard political stuff. So I think that everyone at this paper, since I've been here, whatever their ideological stance, they're very political people, but we don't always look at some of the hard politics, mm -hmm. like some of the individual laws and their mechanisms and some of the people running. So I think it's really cool that Dale is a very political guy in the sense that he studies that local government stuff, he studies the bread and butter of the laws. So, he, it, yeah, it wasn't a column. He wasn't saying, oh, we should vote against it. We should vote in favor of it. It was just a summary of everything that Measure R is and how it might affect you at home. Right. So, he, I mean, I, I like hearing that, too. He really dissects it, right? You mm -hmm. know, just looks at it, you know, word for word. And it's like last week he did a story on the, how, the rent control law. Mm -hmm. So he's been doing kind of a pseudo-series on some of these November ballot initiatives. And it's definitely interesting because you only get so much when you read the summary online or in the ballot. Mm -hmm. So having someone go and actually look at that and do a little bit of a deep dive is really useful, mm -hmm. at least personally. I mean, yeah, I think it really, you know, leans towards like almost like investigative journalism in a sense. Mm -hmm. I think it's really nice, you know, and I think that too, I mean, the story itself is really having an impact on, um, on the Bay Area too, mm -hmm. you know, at large. Because there are like dispensaries in the area, there are companies that are really trying to you know, make money off of, you know, the production of marijuana, mm -hmm. you know? and I think studying those laws in detail gives the, I think it's smart for a reader or for the public, like people mm -hmm. like you watching, citizens. to be informed, and I think that's really important, so that, so that way you know what's going on and you're not blind to what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's important. Yeah, and it's, it just especially at this time of year when we're a month out from an election, mm -hmm. it's nice to just be doing this hard-hitting political analysis. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we've never had it, but just it's... Well, you know, I was going to say it's the first time I've seen it since my time on the paper, but this is also my first time writing during an election semester. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe never mind that, but it's still really nice that he's doing this. Mm -hmm. Some other big front-page stories were we had coverage of the staff baseball game. So this was really fun. We had a nice picture of Alex Porter that I'm going to hold up for the camera here. <laughs> I think Perry, uh, Perry took that one, and I think you and him picked this out for the front page, didn't you? Um, yeah, so we, oh, well, you know, this, this week's front page was a little um, tricky to put together. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't take the image myself, but um, I, I think the, the image came out really nice. You know, I think, I think Perry took a really good picture right there. Mm -hmm. We also had an update on the construction for the Brentwood campus, which is expected to be fully operational by spring 2020. Wow. According to some admin. That's crazy. 2020? That's what they said. So mm. we will have to wait and see. I don't... 
LMC doesn't have like a history of habitually delaying their projects, but I mean, knock on wood, it's construction. Like you can't count on three hands the number of things that could be that could affect that at some point. Mm -hmm. Right. I. I don't know. It's interesting to think, you know, that they're actually making that much progress that fast, and that by spring, people who will like spring twenty twenty, you will be able to take a class there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's this is really fast. Yeah, you know? and I mean, it, it kind of sucks from my perspective because I know that this is my last semester on campus, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like to me, it doesn't seem very fast. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the relative pace of how construction projects usually go, to be from your planning stage to being done in three, four years is, mm. yeah, pretty cool. Right. I mean, I'm just, I'm just impressed, you know what I mean? And, and that means that the other campus by, um, that already exists, that's going to basically be irrelevant pretty soon then too, huh? Because mm. they're getting rid of that as soon as they, they yeah. finish up this one. I don't know what the time frame is for decommissioning the current Breadwin Center and having the new one take over for it, mm. but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure that's what the plan is to have that happen. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be interesting to see, you know what I mean? Even mm -hmm. if you don't, sometimes, you know, like you said in, the la in one of the earlier podcasts, the whole point of the community college is to make it accessible. So mm -hmm. it might be your last semester, but, you know, something could always pop up, you know what I mean? So it's nice to have that for the community. I know you guys want me to stay on the paper another semester, but please don't jinx me. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it, it really is nice that just that many more people are going to have an LMC next to them. Mm -hmm. And they're turning it into more of a satellite campus and less of just, like, a business center. I just like seeing it more accessible, you know. Just you know, more community building. This well, place is growing up so fast, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this whole Contra Costa County area. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Look around. It, there's construction everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's a big indicator. They Houses. finally got Vasco Road functioning. Really. You can actually drive on it. Mm. <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. For the campus page, we had a coverage on Books Alive, which I believe we talked about this in either the last episode or the one before that. Books Alive is this sort of event. It's not unique to LMC that name might be but what it is is that we have it, it's basically where they have people sign up to be living books in which is just people who have done something interesting or have an interesting life story they sit down at the table and they tell you their life story they narrate it to you the other story for campus page was there's a bunch of new English courses mm -hmm. so starting soon there's a bunch of extra sections of English 100 a bunch of extra sections of English 100 s and there's also some new ones that were either very recently introduced or are about to be introduced. Uh, like Introduction to Gender Studies was one of them that I believe was, it was this semester or last spring semester mm. that just got launched. Well, that's good to hear because I know that a lot of English classes fill up really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's good to, to see them add more to the roster. And even what you said, the, the class of Gender Studies. Yeah, that, I mean, it was last spring. That, I mean, that, that's pretty interesting. It, it ties in with, you know, the front page story as well. You know, mm -hmm. we're writing, there's more tolerance and more uh, availability, mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah, I mean, the big thing with that, just back to that story really quick, the big thing is that the very first issue in his collection, the front page story is um, sexuality's issues left out of new course or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the very most recent issue in his collection says, it, it's talking about the new LGBTQ studies degree. Right. Or in which it's just that interesting contrast from left out to its own degree. Mm. And so definitely the wealth of new English classes that we've either gotten soon or that we're going to get soon is playing into that common theme of just being able to diversify the things you learn about. As far as teachers goes, so Perry Continente, he was on the podcast last week to talk about his visit to Five Sons Brewery. This week he visited EJ Fair for his Oktoberfest series. And he had a rave review of that and... This, the next one that he's visiting is uh, Del, Del Cielo, mm. a brewery called that, which obviously translates to From Heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not obviously, but yeah, that translates to From Heaven, which I feel like that's a little bit arrogant to name your brewery From Heaven's Beer, but I respect it. I, I mean, come on, some of the best things, you know, they pat themselves too much on the back. I mean, the Corona beer, King of Beers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Go big or go home. Mm, there you go. Yeah, go big or go home. Yeah, no, yeah. like I said, I, I respect it. That's the continuation of Perry's Oktoberfest series this week and next week. We also had Lily Montero uh, had a profile with student outreach coordinator Elizabeth Ramirez, and that was the continuation of her uh, Hispanic American Heritage Month profile series. And the other big story for features was the player, uh, play, not re review, preview. So Becky Shaw is the nearest production that the LMC Theater is going to be putting on. 
and Brianna Crawford went out to the theater that's being held at and she has a full story previewing it. So I actually did talk to the people, all the cast members from Becky Shaw oh, actually. Did. Yeah, I've um, uh, interviewed all of them uh, for her. And um, I talked to them and I'm really interested. Um, it's actually, so Becky Shaw, if I could explain a little bit, yeah, is basically, um, it's like, a, it's a dark comedy type thing. I talked to all the cast members and they're really excited about this this uh, production in particular. Um, because it is um, a dark comedy, I also talked to them about, you know, the drama department's capability and how they, you know, discuss certain issues without getting too controversial. They said basically, you know, just keep an open mind. They're actors, respect the actors, not the characters themselves. Yeah. You know, because my first um, take, or my, my first, I'm looking for the word right now. Um, impression? Impression, exactly, on, on the drama department was that they were a bit controversial and a bit too much. This is back when I took a field trip over here to the mm -hmm. LMC, to the, this art department in particular, you know, mm -hmm. so like the journalism lab, the graphics lab, the theater, um, section. You know, theater section, exactly. So they put on a performance, and it was kind of um, disappointing, I might use, um, a word I might use, or well, the crowd just didn't know what to feel, because they were talking about, you know, certain subjects that were a little bit too dark, but what everybody has to remember at the end is that this is just a means of storytelling, and it doesn't reflect the actors themselves, it's just the acting. Mm. So I think that was a point all of them try to, you know, get across to me. And uh, it looks just like a good production. I think they're, they're giving it their 110%, and I uh, can't wait to see it. When you, you mentioned the separation between art and artist and the actor and the character. One of my favorite films is uh, Dr. Strangelove, and it's funny. I'm, I, I know it sounds like I'm going off on a tangent for no reason. The reason I bring it up mm -hmm. is because one of the characters in that movie is this American general who just hates communists, wants to kill all the communists, mm -hmm. and then his actual actor was a registered member of the Communist Party. Mm. It's not always... The actor doesn't always genuinely stand for what they're saying. It's just the character. Right. I think that's just important to remember always, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what, what form of, of art, media, or you're looking at, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like, you know, they're giving it their all, and uh, I just see, like, you know, they're very passionate people, so. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the sports page, they had coverage for volleyball, soccer, and football, or I guess in other words, volleyball, football, and football. Mm. <laughs> and they also had a Q&A with quarterback uh, Nikita Jeggers. I haven't actually heard his name pronounced out loud so I might have gotten that completely wrong I even went to go take pictures of the volleyball um, volleyball game they, they really performed you know really good you know that they, they I heard that they basically they win but just by like just a little bit mm -hmm. you know what I mean and I think that you know they definitely have that spirit in them to basically continue and, and push on you know so mm -hmm. I like seeing I like going to those games I like photographing them and um, I think they're on, they're on a good path we gotta get Hugo on here too, probably. Got, yes, either Hugo's one of them. Hugo's definitely our sports guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't say that to you, Louder. I'll say Zeus will get mad at you. Mm, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's all we had for last week. Uh, this week coming up, there's a bunch of events on campus. One particular is uh, a Docker panel held mm. by, I believe, LMCAS. That's happening sometime this week that we've got coverage at. A bunch of other campus events. As always, stories will be hosted this Friday. And the physical issue, they'll be put up online at lmcexperience.com. And the other issue that we had, uh, the other story that you and I had was that we saw Venom. So that's going to oh, yes. be a review crew for next week. No, yeah, so remember I was, you guys weren't sure if, or I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to make it on time. Mm -hmm. So you guys had Alex Perry and you. Writing the review. Writing okay. the review. So then since you didn't write it down, what did you think of it? Okay, what do I think about the Venom movie? I am, I've always liked superhero movies. Mm -hmm. I think this one's really, it's, it's cool and it's, it's cool, like, how did you phrase it? Like, cool in the worst way possible? I, I, like, no, the, the tag that I used in my story and that I've been telling all my friends when they asked me about it is that I said it was stupid in the coolest possible way. There you go. <laughs> that That is, that's very reflective of when the ve the character of Venom was yes. released. Yes. That is his base. I mean, he had, like, a big run in the 90s and all that. That's, that's what the 90s He's is. a very 90s character. <laughs> exactly. So I think, I think in that sense, it does it justice. The question was two years ago, three years ago, could a Venom movie stand on its own and be good? You know, mm -hmm. could, it, could it be good? It's it's watchable. I think that there are some really good moments in the Venom movie, but sadly, there are just a lot of really cringe-worthy moments. And it's, I, I'd say the Venom parts, when Venom is Venom, mm -hmm. 
I think that makes it worth it. De definitely. But when Venom is Venom on screen and he's doing those Venom things mm. to that Venom soundtrack and that Venom lighting, that's the that's the uh, part. Don't where even the movie talk about shines. the soundtrack. That no, the the soundtrack was disappointing. You are no, you are correct. Mm. I, I had to think of another word to put Venom in front of. Right. Soundtrack was not the best part of the movie. Yeah. No. I think I think Eminem. I think he he took a loss on that one, especially coming off after uh, that whole M MGK. Thing. I don't know if you heard anything about I it. I heard a little bit. <laughs> that, that, that was an L. Yeah, for, for Eminem. I don't think they, they. I don't know what he was thinking. That was just. I mean, at least cash, he talked you know? about the character. Anyway, Venom was. It, I thought it was a good movie. Opinions are kind of split. You can read about it in the paper this Friday. Well, we're gonna have a special edition anyways, where and we're we, just yeah, cutting we, that out. Yeah. So. All right. So we'll, we'll talk more in detail about it later. Mm -hmm. But so until next week, I'm Robert Pierce. I'm Anthony Martinez. And this has been Back Talk. Thank you for watching. Thank you.